This is free response question two from the calculator section of the 2024 AP Calc AB exam. A particle moves along the x-axis so that its velocity at time t greater than or equal to zero is given by this function v of t. Part A says there is one time, tr, in the interval from zero to two when the particle is at rest. We are asked to find this time when the particle is at rest. And for zero is less than t is less than the time at which the particle is at rest, we want to know if the particle's moving to the right or to the left, and to give a reason for our answer. So for the first part of this question, we're trying to find when the particle is at rest. We're just going to have to find when the velocity is equal to zero. So for part A, we will write V of t equals zero. And what value of t does this imply? Well, we can consult our graphing calculator. Typing this function into the graphing calculator and then pressing graph, we find that on the relevant interval, which is between zero and two, let's zoom in to that relevant interval around here, this is when the particle is at rest. There's our zero when t, the independent variable, which is x on the calculator, is about 1.426, we'll say. So t is about 1.426. Looking at the graph again, we're not looking at this zero over here because that's outside the interval between zero and two. Then for part A, we're also asked between t equals zero and this time when the particle is at rest, is the particle moving to the right or to the left? Looking at the graph, we can see that this velocity function is positive the entire time between zero and this time when it is at rest. So since the velocity function is positive, the particle is moving to the right on this interval. And there's our answer. Since the velocity is positive on this interval, the particle is moving to the right. On to part b. Find the acceleration of the particle at time t equals 1.5. Show the setup for your calculations. All right, so for that, we'll just take the derivative of velocity to find the acceleration and plug in t equals 1.5. We're also asked if the speed of the particle is increasing or decreasing at this time. Speed is the absolute value of velocity, and if the acceleration and velocity have the same sign, then the speed is increasing. If the acceleration and velocity have opposite signs, then the speed is decreasing. So that's what we'll have to look at for part B. Beginning with the acceleration at time t equals 1.5, the acceleration at time t equals 1.5 is equal to the derivative of the velocity function evaluated at t equals 1.5. So let's use the graphing calculator to evaluate this derivative. I'll press the math button and then go to option 8 to access the derivative function. Rather than t on the calculator, we'll use x as our independent variable. The function is the natural log of x squared minus 4x plus 5 and then minus 0.2x. And we are evaluating this at 1.5. This is our acceleration, the derivative of velocity we find it's about negative one. So coming down here to the acceleration, we find from the calculator that the acceleration is about negative one. Now, when asked if the speed is increasing or decreasing, well, we see that the acceleration is negative. I think of this as pulling the particle in the leftward direction. So if the particle's velocity is negative, the particle's moving to the left, then its speed must be increasing because not only is it moving to the left, but it's getting pulled to the left even faster because of the negative acceleration. So then what is the sign of the velocity function at t equals 1.5? Well, going back to our graph, we can see that at time t equals 1.5, the velocity is actually negative. That's right around here when x is around 1.5 on the graph, and we see that it is negative. So the velocity and acceleration are both negative, hence the speed is increasing. And there is our answer. Since the acceleration and the velocity at this time are negative, the speed of the particle is increasing. It's moving to the left, and it's doing so at an increasingly fast rate. Moving on to part C. The position of the particle at time t is x of t, and its position at time t equals 1 is negative 3. We are asked to find the position of the particle at time t equals 4. To do this, we'll take the initial 
given position at time t equals 1 of negative 3. And then we will integrate the velocity, adding up those rates of change, to get us from t equals 1 to t equals 4. So for part c, we can say that x of 4 is going to equal x of 1 plus the integral from 1 to 4 of the velocity function. Now x of 1 is given to us as negative 3, and for this integral, we will consult the calculator. On the calculator, I'll press the math button, and then option 9 for the integration function. We are integrating from t equals 1, because that was the starting point that we were given, to t equals 4, since that's the desired ending point. Now we'll just scroll up to the velocity function to enter it in the integral. And again, rather than t, we will use x as the independent variable on the calculator. Plugging this all in, the integral is about 0.1971. So coming back down to our work, this is negative 3 plus 0.1971. And so on the calculator, we will just take our answer and add negative 3. Doing that, we get about negative 2.803. And that's the position of the particle at time t equals 4. Moving on then to part d. Find the total distance traveled by the particle over the interval from 1 to 4, and show the setup for your calculations. So for this, we'll just take the integral that we just calculated, except instead of integrating the velocity, we need to integrate the absolute value of the velocity. This is because with velocity, some positive and negative velocities, like moving to the right, moving to the left, can cancel out. But since we're asked to calculate just total distance traveled and not displacement, we don't want any of the velocities to cancel out. We just want to add up all the distance traveled, so we got to integrate speed, the absolute value of velocity. So here for part d, we are going to integrate from 1 to 4 the speed function, s of t dt, which, of course, is the absolute value of the velocity function. So the absolute value of v of t dt. So let's go ahead and punch this into the calculator. Again, I'll press the math button and option 9 to access the integration function. We are integrating from 1 to 4. And then before I type in my velocity function, I'm going to press the math button again and then access my absolute value function, which is in the number category of that math button submenu. Option 1 is the absolute value function, and then in these absolute value bars, I can type in the velocity function. So there's the absolute value of velocity, and integrating this from 1 to 4 will give us the total distance traveled, 0.958. And there that is. The integral of the absolute value of velocity gives us this distance traveled. And that completes our solution to free response question 2 from the 2024 AP Calc AB exam. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my Calculus One course and Calculus One exercises playlists in the description for more. And for a little bit more practice, you can check out my 10 hours of AP Calc AB BC FRQs in the description. Thanks for watching. Uh, uh, I'm the mathematical menace, the machinations of mankind. Two calculators at the same time, hand signs and abacus, finger count and calculus. I'm the V to the T, my parameter, the rapidest. Happens like this, my lectures, the most prominent, dominant. Call me the Morgan, I get the compliments. The union in together like any time that we intersect, cause my opponents know they need.